Hello gentle viewers, this is Vindian, welcoming you to the penultimate episode of our Out of the Park Baseball 18 franchise finale thing. I hope I come up with something more exciting for next time. Um, right. So, um, for those of you who missed the previous episode, we played as the United States, we did very well in the first round, and then got our asses handed to us in the second round. But... I've never let a few defeats set me back, and so we chose to play as Puerto Rico in our quest to continue in the War of Baseball Classic. If you're thinking, hey, if Indian, if Puerto Rico loses, will you pick a different team for the championship? The answer is yes. Yes, I will. But we're not going to do any of the normal stuff we do, because unlike the previous games, we're actually going to be playing this game. Um, I haven't talked much about in-game tactics during o my OTP18 series in the past, and that's because I normally don't play the games. But I realize that might be something interesting for people to watch, and it'll make things more exciting, I think. We're just going to go ahead and click Play Game at Japan. That is a misnomer, by the way. I believe everyone here is in um, Southern California. <laughs> Um, no. Puerto Rico is mine. Let's take a quick look at the team and think about what we could do to improve things. This hasn't been the greatest of tournaments for one Francisco Lindor, although he does have, have, have he has had some power, and Carlos Correa hasn't been great either. But our the center of our lineup has actually been fairly effective. Well, till we get down to Raymond Fuentes. So right off the bat, as we're sorting here by contact, we're going to bump Yadier Molina to fifth. Because Raymond Fuentes isn't that great at hitting. Um, I think we're also going to bump up Hernandez. Because I actually want Fuentes to hit last. Yeah, so it'll be boop, boop. So strategically, what I'm going for here is making sure that Fuentes, who clearly appears to be one of the worst hitters we've got, is at the bottom of the pack. I really don't like the idea of batting Vargas third. Especially compared to a guy like, say, Francisco Lindor. But we're in a, this is for all the marbles. So we've got to make the best decision for this particular team. Which means uh, Vargas has been so hot during the tournament, I don't think we can justify taking him out of the lineup or pushing him down. So, right, lineup is now set. Let's look at the pitch wars. You can access the custom lineups from within the game. That's pretty cool. I see you can save it and then use it later on. Very cool. Why do you think I want the batting ratings? I don't know. Barrios is unfortunately our best starter, and this is a severe weakness for our team. We've got a decent bullpen backing him up, so if we can make it through the first couple of innings, we'll be in good shape. But this is its kind of a big weakness for the Puerto Ricans, is that they Yoel Pinero. Now, something else we need to consider. Um, when the AI retires someone... It basically sets all their stats to zero. That doesn't mean they actually are that bad. It just means that's the way that they're going to be addressing them. So... We'll probably still avoid playing them, though. Joel Pinheiro used to be very good for a very long time. Right. As you ponder the gloriousness that is the puerto rican pitching staff i'm going to quickly mute my microphone so i can blow my nose and then i'll be right back all right i am back 
I really wish this cold would go away. I've had this cold for about two months now. It might be time to go see a doctor. I don't know. But I believe we are now set. Oh, the team set. There's so much cool stuff in here that I never get to see because I never play games. Very cool. Ballpark. We could set it wherever we want to. We'll just leave it as a default. Yes, turn on the in-game sound. Yeah, this all looks good. Okie doke. Pow. Now, so I realized when I was doing some recording for my Witcher series, or Witcher series, Witcher Quick Hits the other day, that I didn't have the sound on, on OBS. So hopefully you guys can hear this. Um, if you can't, please be kind and drop a note in the comments so I don't have like 12 videos with no sound in them. Right. So how do you manage a team in the midst of a game? One of the most important things to think about is what your players are good at and what your players aren't good at. And every team has strengths and weaknesses. Our team is preloaded with the lineup. We've got good contact. We've got a decent amount of power. We've got a fairly well-rounded lineup, which is good. But our pitching staff isn't so great. So one of the keys to our success is going to be getting the absolute most out of our starter. Which is... Ah, it's since we're the home team, or when they're away, we're the away team, technically, we actually bat first. So... For whatever reason, Ichiro Suzuki is not actually on this team. Probably because he's actually fairly old. I would have at least made him like a pinch hitter or a bat boy or whatever, but it is what it is. Now, Japan has a fairly talented pitcher here. Um, and this is purely based on what we know of how he's done in the turn, but he's actually done a very good job of striking people out. Um, fortunately, we don't have any other information about him because he's retired and the game doesn't save the stats of people that are retired. So, each individual at-bat can be a war if you want it to be. You can actually decide what to have them do on every single pitch. I, however, am not going to do that. I'm actually going to go ahead... Let's see, if I switch to pitch by pitch... I can still hit space bar. Yeah, we'll do... Pitch by pitch, because it makes more sense. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and let them let Lindor do what he wants to do. He's a professional hitter. Let's see how he handles Sugano. Tomoyuki Sugano. Damn, that's a good pitch assortment. He got a base hit. We trusted in Francisco Lindor, and we were rewarded. How many pitches did that take? Just one. Good work. So, Lindor is now on... Uh, first base, actually slightly off first base. <coughs> and so now our strategic um, options open up. So, for every single at-bat, you have several choices you could theoretically make. So many so that there's actually 12. So many so there's actually 12. That didn't make any sense. Um... Swing away basically tells the batter to do what he thinks is best on the pitch. Take pitch is an order of a take sign. <coughs> <coughs> Which says the pitch could be right down the middle and he won't swing at it. Bunting, if you're not familiar with the intricacies of baseball in baseball, what you do with bunting is you put one hand on the handle of the bat and you put one all the way up at the barrel. Um, and what you're trying to do is just kind of Jab at the ball so it dies right in front of home plate. Um, bunting is stupid, and you should never do it. Except in very limited circumstances. But it is an option available to you if you're feeling particularly silly. Steal second base basically tells Francisco Lindor, take off on the pitch if you think it's a good pitch to steal on. Send forced, on the other hand, is steal the base no matter what. Hit and run um, basically says as soon as the batter takes his swing, the base runner takes off. Run and hit, as soon as the pitch is thrown, the, bat the base runner takes off and the hitter swings. These others we'll talk about if they come up. Um, five, six, five and six and seven are all fairly self-explanatory, I think. But again, 
And Carlos Correa is a pretty damn good hitter. How is Lindor on the base paths? Uh, you know what? We're going to change something here. I want the bigger labels. No, it's not here. It's in options. I want to see if it does large the large labels. Yeah, this is what I wanted. I wanted to see base running and stuff. And you can still see who's doing what. Um, really interested to see how OTP19 fixes, changes everything here. But So I'm going to go ahead and give Carlos Correa permission to swing away. Where'd the ball go? Oh, God, I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention. It's right there. The second baseman picked it up. And he made the smart play and threw the base runner out at second. Which makes sense. It's called the fielder's choice because the fielder had a choice to make. He could have thrown the ball to first if he wanted to. But instead he chose to eliminate the lead runner, the guy on second, which is actually very smart. But here's what I like the most. Carlos Correa made him work. I'm not so happy about him missing this pitch. That pitch was right down the middle, but you know. So we're learning a little bit more about him with each at bat. He's thrown eight pitches. We're going to go ahead and let Kenneth Vargas do his thing for now. And he struck out. Okay. Carlos Beltran. Can you drive home Carlos Correa? No. You can hit a weak little topper to the second baseman. But we learned something. We learned a little bit more about how this pitcher operates. He throws mostly fastballs. Which is honestly probably because of the way the game simulates retired players. It probably only thinks he has a fastball. And also his fastball isn't very good either. This gives us an advantage later on in the game because he'll get tired, and once he gets tired, he'll start making bad, worse decisions. Now, as we switch over to the other side, we've actually got a lot more options. One of the first options we have are these different pitching ones. So pitch is telling the pitcher, do what makes the most sense to you. Pitch around is telling him, this is a dangerous hitter. If you have to choose between walking him or giving him a big fat pitch to hit, walk in. Pitch to contact is the opposite. This pitcher is not very scary. If you have a choice between uh, throwing him a ball and giving him a big fat pitch to hit, give him the pitch to hit. Hold runner. All these others we'll talk about when there's a runner on first. Pitch out. So pitch out basically tells the catcher, I'm going to throw the ball directly to you. I'm not trying to pitch. Your job is to catch the ball and then immediately be ready to throw the base runner out. We would never call a pitch out with no one on base. That's stupid, but it's a possibility. You can call an intentional walk, um, which basically you signal to the catcher. The catcher stands up, and you put the guy on first base. And finally, you can order the batter be hit, and you can send someone out to the mound. There's an additional level here we won't really get into very much right now, which are different shifts you can make. And there's loads and loads and loads of different shifts. This has been a major change in modern baseball. Um, a lot more shifts are being used as people study hitters and figure out, hey, Kosuke Tanaka really enjoys hitting down the right baseline. Let's shift things so that they're better off here. Um, so this is where you position your infielders. Corners and the third baseman and first baseman come up to about here. Third baseman be about here. First baseman be about here. That's a good defense against a bunt. Infield in brings everyone in. Um, and you have third or first. Guard the lines. If you have our hypothetical version of Kosuke Tanaka that loves hitting it down one of the baselines, you tell the, the infielders, push yourselves over to the lines. Infield deep. Um, they'll play back on the grass. This is usually for power hitters. Um, double play depth. Um, the first baseman and third baseman stay about where they are, but the second baseman and, short, and shortstop will actually cheat toward um, will cheat toward second base, so that they can be in a position to grab the ball, toss it, and then fling it over. And then there's different shifts in different directions. Um, we could even use guard third base line. If we were really scared of him. And those are your infield shifts. Outfield shifts are much less interesting. 
Um, that's just where you position the different outfielders. It's a really nice addition to the game that I don't think existed in OTP 16, maybe 17. I don't think it was in 16, though. Um, but to be honest, it's not really something that you need to worry about playing your games. Because it's not likely to make a huge difference unless you have really dangerous hitters. So with this said, we're going to go ahead and let Jose Barrios do his thing. Now, Berrios' ratings here aren't the kind to engender much faith in him. He's middle of the road in virtually every conceivable stat. So we'll have to see how he handles the threat that is Kosuke Tanaka. He's going to pop, fly out to the third baseman. Oh no, hit him in the head. Um, and that was on how many pitches? Two pitches. One of the most important things to watch for a pitcher is how many strikes he's throwing and um, how many pitches he's throwing. And it's really important to monitor both of these things because these will be your clues as to when your pitcher is getting tired and or is being less than good. A nice line drive out to the second baseman. Good work, Barrios. Although you can see here, look at him nibble around the corners. Um, this can be a very effective strategy against scary hitters, but this might be in a situation where we tell him, look, Seiche Uchikawa isn't that scary. Maybe just throw it to him. Here comes Tetsudo Yamada, who I know from experience is one of their better players. Um, I want to see, is there another screen that we have hidden? We have the bullpens hidden. That would be kind of neat to see. I'm going to see where it actually puts them, and then we'll determine if it's something we want to keep. That's stupid. Why on earth would you put it there? No, go away. That's so dumb. Right. Hide and hide. What is the quick box for? I'm not sure. And it's not that important. What I was really hoping to, to see would be to see how many strikes he's thrown, but we can always check the box score or the game log for that. So, let's keep going. Let's see if we can get a 1-2-3 first inning. Oh, dear. He's gone. Well, shit. And here's the thing. That pitch actually wasn't a bad place to throw that. But he doesn't have... Why is he only throwing fastballs? Do you literally only have fastballs? You've got other pitches too, mate. Use other pitches. I wonder if this is because it's in one pitch mode. Because it's pitch by pitch. We're going to do this one more with Yoshitomo Tsusugo. And I want to see... Okay, he actually threw a curveball that time. That one might be gone too. Oh, nope. Center fielder got there. So that's one thing I really want to see them do in OTP 19. I want some control over telling them what pitches to throw. Because <coughs> 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 there's not a major league hitter alive. <coughs> My God, excuse me. <coughs> there's not a major league hitter alive that isn't going to feast. <coughs> Oh. oh god, I am so sorry. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to mute a microphone. I'm going to go get a cough drop.
All right, everyone. I'm sorry about the pauses uh, in this particular episode. Hopefully, I'll get my coughing under control. I've got a cough drop now. Um, it is a Walgreens brand honey lemon cough drop. Um, it's sugar free um, because I need to lose weight. And so I have, I'm trying to cut sugar out of my diet as best I can. We'll see how that goes. Um, right. So the point I was trying to make is, in real life, if you give any pitcher and hitter and nothing but fastballs, eventually he's going to crank one. Because it's the basic pitch that everyone knows how to throw. And it's something that almost any idiot is going to be able to get on top on top of with once he sees, okay, this is the pitcher's arm angle. This is how he throws the pitch. This is where the pitch ends up when he's at this release point. Eventually he's gonna clobber it. That's why I use your uh, your secondary pitches. And Barrios is actually not bad in this regard. Uh, we can't see him now, so we'll take a look at him later. So not a great start, but we'll see how Yadier Molina handles things. Very nice work. He hit that right past the first baseman. Good job. Very good job. Now, Molina's very, very slow. So there is no way on earth that we're ever going to consider, even for a moment, stealing a base. He's thrown 19 pitches. So basically, a good rule of thumb is a pitcher having a great day will throw about 10 pitches an inning. A pitcher having a good day will throw about 15 in an inning. And if he's having a bad day, it's going to creep up into the 20 or 30 pitches in one inning. Um, which makes sense. So you figure 15 pitches is 5 pitches for each hitter, which is really good. Um, 10 is amazing. 20 is where you're getting into dangerous territory. We might actually play a little bit of rope-a-dope with Sugano here. We're actually going to tell Baez to take this pitch, no matter what. It was a ball. A very good... Wow, that ball wasn't even close. So we're going to tell him to do it again. We're going to basically have him take until he gets to do a strike. By the way, OTP, another great thing would be here, would be to add another option that says take until strike. Um, so we're already up 2 nothing, and he's way off. Where he wants to. That pitch is actually really good. That could have been called by some umpires. That was a really good cutter. Um, I'll talk a little bit about pitch types as we play. Since I know we haven't seen many games like this. A cutter breaks. Um, so if this is the center of the center of the plate. A cutter is a fastball that instead of just going like straight. Will kind of curve off. It's a very very sharp break. Um, it's the pitch in Mariano Rivera famous. It's very, very deadly if thrown right. It's better against people who are the opposite hand, so it's really good against a left-handed hitter for a right-handed pitcher. So basically, the goal is they don't get the fat part of the bat. They don't get the barrel of the bat on the um, on the pitch. That was a good pitch. Nicks the strike zone. Well done. You've earned my respect. And for all of that noise, Javier Baez hit a weak rounder to second. But we did achieve an important goal, which is forcing him to throw more pitches. More pitches is more information. More information gives us better plans of what to do. Now, do we want to get sneaky? Yadier Molina is not super fast. So with a good hit and run, we can actually score him from second. If Hernandez makes contact. We're playing, this is the only game we get. We're going to play balls to the wall. Let's try the hit and run. This is probably going to go very bad. And he fouled it off. That was stupid. I'll try one more time. Another foul ball. See, in order for the hit and run to work, idiot, you've got to hit the ball fair. Well, he'd say he hits a weak little ground ball. This gets Molina over to third. So, we got Angel Pagan. Such a great baseball name. Um, Listen to that crowd cheer. 
they must be really big fans of ironically named baseball players. And a weak little ground ball, and we score nothing. God damn it. All right, so let's look at Berrios' pitches. So Berrios has a good fastball, a good sinker, and a good curveball. All his pitches are about the same. It looks like in the future, his best pitch will be his curveball. Um, a sinker is another style of fastball. Um, here's where the baseball purists sometimes have their, their arguments. There's a pitch called the two-seam fastball because you grip it on the seams. And there's a pitch called a sinker, which is really, really similar. Um, some people say they are the same pitch. Some people say they're distinct. I've never heard of a pitcher throwing both a two-seamer and a sinker, but I'm not. it's not a point that's important enough to argue. What is important enough to argue is the fact that... Yeah, we don't have a head scout. Okay. Um, is that sinkers go down in the strike zone. The purpose of a sinker is that the batter hits it on the top of the baseball and beats it into the ground so that your infielders can have a much easier time with it. The third pitch he has is a curveball. Curveballs are are slower pitches than a fastball or a sinker, and they break in any number of ways. Every curveball is a little bit different, just like a snowflake. Um, no, it's not meant in the other sense of the word snowflake. I meant it literally like the little things that are made out of snow. Um, and I'm showing hand gestures. Why am I using hand gestures? You can't see them. God damn it. Um... Curveballs, uh, really good ones, are called 12 to 6 curveballs. They go from the top of the strike zone all the way down to the bottom. And a very sharp break. But most of your other curveballs curve quite a bit, just not by as much. Um, if you're ever wondering why is this random guy named Candy Cummings in the Hall of Fame, it's because he supposedly invented the curveball. So. I would love to see an OTP-19. I don't know if this is even in, remotely in the plans. I'd love to see them actually show the pitch break here in the diagram. Show where the pitch would normally be for a fastball and then show where it ends up. A lot of your, like, your MLBs, the show, your triple play baseballs, your high heat, all of these had this feature. It looks like OTP doesn't have it yet. Right. Um, Seiya Suzuki, get him. Good work. So this is a ground baller's dream scenario. Look at how he's pitching this. Only one pitch above the strike zone, everything right around the knees. Even if he'd made contact with one of those, he'd probably just beaten it into the ground. But that did take a lot of pitches. That is a little worrying. Um, still throwing way too many fastballs. For this many pitches... The only reason I would expect to see this many fastballs is either his fastball was a super dominant pitch or if he didn't know other pitches. But he knows both of them. This troubles me. Barrios, throw less fastballs. Damn. Maybe he shouldn't throw fewer. Okay, this is actually a really bad at bat. That for whatever reason the, the, the hitter just couldn't make any heads or tails of both of these pitches, 1 and 3, are very hittable pitches. And he only throws 92, or 90 to 9, 92 to 95, which isn't a dominating fastball, unless there's a lot of movement. Um, so the very best uh, pitchers can put what's called movement on their pitches, which means that instead of going straight, which is what fastball is supposed to do, at the very end, they'll make like just the slightest bit of a tweak. It's less than a cutter's movement, but it's more than a standard football, uh, fastballs. Football? Yeah, if you start throwing footballs on a baseball diamond, that would be very confusing. God. All right, Barrios has struck out the first two hitters. He's on 27 pitches. Up. Oh, that's... Is it gone? Nope. Center fielder got it. Whoo. Yeah, he, there's something wrong with him. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the way the simulation acts. You do not have a seven pitch at bat where six of them are, are fastballs. Unless you're a reliever. Only a reliever should be throwing their first pitch that often. That's not good. That's going to run us into trouble eventually. It already has once. Ramon Fuentes. Can you get to Sugano? He's throwing 27 pitches. He's actually in 
pretty good shape. Ump, you're going to be sacrificial lamb, Fuentes. You're going to be taking all the pitches. Very close to the strike zone. I don't even care if you do get a strike. Oh, wow. That would have been a good pitch swing case, uh, swing at. There was a sinker. Um, the sinker should... The, again, the sinker is basically going to kind of go like a very... It's a, it's a fast break, but instead of a cutter, which usually breaks horizontally, sinkers break vertically. Well, I guess you're going to swing away because it's a 1-2 can. And drop it. Damn it. Right to the right fielder. But it was useful. We threw, made him throw more pitches. Okay, lean door. We need to get our, our leadoff hitter started. Take this pitch. Bullshit, um. Boo. That pitch was a ball. Oh, come on. This curveball's not remotely close to the strike zone. I also want an angry glare at the umpire button. But sadly, that does not exist. Did you, did you throw a pitch out? Oh, I told him to swing away, but even only very stupid pitchers, only very stupid hitters will swing at something that far off the plate. And Lindor grounds out. That freaking umpire. What the shit, mate. Now, sliders are a pitch that it's slower than a fastball. And it breaks, but it's a more exaggerated break than a cutter. But it usually breaks mostly horizontally with some vertical break in there, too. Sliders are much faster than curveballs. Um, one of the greats, Randy Johnson, um, his slider was almost as hard as his fastball. And that's really bad for hitters because they see a pitch coming really fast. Like, oh, it's a fastball. Okay, it's going to be here. I'm going to time a swing. And holy shit, I miss it by like 400 miles. That's the good stuff. What is default? Oh, it zooms out more. And eh, we'll do wide angle so we can actually see the players. Carlos Correa struck out. We're getting dominated by this pitcher, guys. We're going to have to do something different. Okay. Note the difference. Jose Bear is a little better against right-handed pitchers. Or batters. Be really good against pitchers. Um, can you handle Nobuhiro Matsuda? Good work. Nice work getting off the mound and picking that one up. Good work. Now he's starting to mix in that curveball. Although he actually looks like he might be getting a little bit tired. Because if you look at how far off these pitches are. Hmm. Um, another hit weekly to third baseman. There you have it. The perfect at-bat. A long time ago, um, somebody asked, I think it was Nolan Ryan, what's your best pitch? And he says, strike three. A few years later, someone asked Greg Maddox, what's the best pitch? And he said, the one pitch out. And that's what matters. That's really the right answer to that question. Strikeouts are awesome. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm anti-Bull Durham in that respect. But a ground ball on one pitch, it saves your pitcher's arm, it demoralizes the hitter, the hitter gets less information about the pitcher's tendencies. It's the perfect thing. Of course, you can't make a pitcher, a hitter, hit into a ground out every time, but that was a perfect pitch, perfect location. That was Berrios at his finest right there. This is Berrios at his least finest. Uh, he worked in a couple of sinkers. He's still fairly close to the zone, but it looks like he's missing um, on the inside of the plate a little bit too much for us. Outside, actually, because that guy was a left-handed pitcher. Okay, so now we've got a couple of extra options. We can tell him to throw to first, which throws a pickoff throw over to first. We tell him to hold the runner. Holding the runner means that he's going to prepare himself that if he... Um, how do I want to phrase this? He's going to prepare himself for a much quicker motion to the plate. Which usually means the pitch isn't as good. But, it gets to the plate quicker, which means there's a much better chance of getting the guy out. But in this case, he's just going to steal second. God damn it, Yadier Molina, this is what you're on the team for.
Oh, really? Weak shit. Damn it. Yeah, he's all over the place. Berrios is done. Um, I'm going to try to have you get me out of this inning if you can, because I don't have anyone warming up. That was a great job. That was a nice diving stop by the right fielder. All right, we got to get Berrios out of there. He's way, he's all over the freaking place. Only three innings is really subpar, but this is what you have multiple starters for, right? Maybe we need to go with Jorge Lopez here. Lopez at least has good movement, which is really helpful to us. Yeah, I think we are going to go ahead and warm him up. I just don't trust Barrios. His pitches are all over the place. He keeps thinking that every pitch has to be a fastball. Um, ooh, available players only. What? Why do you think I care about the batters? Oh, I see. This tells you the people that aren't injured or aren't too, aren't too tired. Good work. All right, Kenny Svargas. We got to make this guy work. Or I could hit the wrong button and you just get a single to first. That works too. All right, Beltran, make him work. That pitch... Okay, if that pitch was called a strike, I would have lost my shit. That pitch, that's that's fair. Nice little slide there. A ball. He's keeping it down. He knows what he wants to do. He wants to hit a double. He wants to hit a double play. Okay. I'm going to have you take one more pitch. Three and one the count. I'm not going to trust Carlos Beltran's judgment. <laughs> and tell him to swing away. He'll only swing if he thinks he can hit it. So swing away is a bit of a misnomer. He's not saying swing at all costs. He fouled that one off. That was a good pitch to foul off. Of. That was a tough one. 3-2. This is what baseball is all about, my friends. Can Carlos Beltran turn one around? Tie the game, maybe? Or is he going to strike out? He's going to strike out. On a pitch that was not a bloody... St God damn umpire. This umpire. I don't know how much the Japanese manager paid them. But he's clearly giving them a good value for their money. And Yadi Molina. Damn. Nice work. Ooh. Good play by Vargas to make that run for third. That was very smart baseball. I approve. Oh, that was a sinker that didn't sink. Ideally, you want your sinker to be, like, at the middle of the plate or lower. That one was up a little too high. Which means instead of it tumbling out of the strike zone or into the bad part, it tumbles into the strike zone. Which makes it very easy for a batter to get underneath it. All right, Javier Baez. We really need a run here. Do I trust you to do a safety squeeze or a squeeze button? So the suicide squeeze... Is basically you have the bunter bunt, the runner on third takes off with the pitch, and he tries to score. A safety squeeze, you're actually trying to bunt for a base hit. It's a really bad idea with Vargas on first, though. Do we have another first baseman? We really don't. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tell Baez to just swing away. Okay, eh. that was the worst place to hit it. Shallow left field. Didn't give him enough chance to come home. Shit. All right, come on, Enrique. Get us a base hit. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Um. Okay, do you want to tell Yadi and Molina to go for third? Absolutely not. This is Yadier Molina we're talking about. He's super freaking slow. On Hell Pagan. You struck it. Come on, dude. Okay, first of all, the umpire screwed us again, but that was two perfect pitches you just completely whiffed on. 
Now look at the velocity difference between a good curveball and a good fat and, and even a mediocre fastball. That's a 20 mile an hour difference. Nasty stuff. Right, Jorge Lopez is in. Screw you, Jose. Better luck next time. What does Jorge have in his repertoire? Fastball, curveball, changeup. This is a fairly standard mix for most pitchers in Major League history. A changeup is a pitch that you throw that looks like a fastball, but it's way slower. Really good changeups have a bit of a break on them, too. Um, by the way, in case you're wondering, what's a shucker? A shucker is somebody that's really good at getting um, an ear of corn out of the husk. It's called shucking corn. Get him, Jorge. That's not what I meant. And, oh, that's bad. Not one of those pitches should have actually been a strike. And Jorge Lopez was injured on the play. Oh, dear. Well, now in real life, if a pitcher gets hurt, um, the new guy gets as much time as he wants to to warm up. We're going to use, we're going to pull out our secret up in Orlando Roman. Yeah, you notice the status is okay. It's not cold. Um, that's because if a pitcher is injured, they get as many warm-up pitches as they want to. Get him, Orlando. When I said get him, I did not mean immediately give up a single. Oh, he's a knuckleballer. <gasps> the knuckleball. Oh, I see. It doesn't actually say what his pitches are. So the knuckleball is one of the most fun pitches in baseball history because no one knows what's going to happen when you throw it. It's a really slow pitch you throw off your knuckles. Um, and it can break almost anywhere. And it's a, it's a, it's murder for a hitter to even get on top of if it's working. But the question is always, is it working? Nice work. What the shit? You easily could have had him out there. We're going to have him pitch to contact. We cannot take the risk of you walking. Eh, mm. No, I'm going to trust you. You struck him out. That took a lot of pitches. And yeah, those speed difference. Knuckleball 66 fastball. 91! Knuckleball 66. If you threw a knuckleball on most highways in the United States, it wouldn't be speeding. Um, get him, Rimmel. Yeah, it's gonna be an out. That one's gonna kinda die. It just hung in the air too long. Lindor. Ooh, they're gonna walk him. Okay, really, Lindor, you swung at that garbage. So, to give you a visual representation, that's basically coming at his head. And he swung at it. Really, mate? Really? Let's try to get something going. Let's do a hit and run. Nope, they're going to throw over. I'll try hit and run again. Oh, that was... Oh, it's foul. Damn it. That would have been brilliant if that would have landed. That would have been a score. Yeah, that was pretty good. That got the job done. It got us a runner on third and a runner on first. Okay. Okay. We need to keep the pressure on Sugano. So I'm actually going to tell you to take some pitches. Oh, wow. That was a pitch out. That better have been a pitch out, given how bad that looked. Could try double steal. Oh, we can't double steal home. That's right. Oh, what the... Mm. That is not a strike. It's just not. This freaking umpire. As far as you didn't call that one a bloody strike. But that's a legit strike. Why I'm doing this is because the pressure should be on him, not us. Now you swing the bat. And foul it off. That was a good pitch to hit, too. Ah, oh, charge the mound. That bastard hit him. Now all the pressure is on him. And we're going to do the most infuriating thing. Beltran, take the pitch. 
Damn, that would have been a pitch to clobber. Shit, he's coming right after him. Fouling it off is okay. Ball. Okay, this is all of a sudden the most important at bat in the game so far. Oh, he fouled it off again. A ball. Beltran's doing a really good job of making him work. Good work. Um, a fork ball is a pitch. It's somewhere, but a fork ball is almost a cutter that breaks down. It's a lot slower, um, but it breaks straight down. Uh, I will send him on this if it gives me the option. Okay, he's just going to do it automatically. You did what you had to do, Beltron. You made the sacrifice fly, and you tied the game. That's what you're here for. Now it's up to Yachty to give us our first lead. I'll just send the at-bat. Beautiful. Mm. I might have told Korea to go there if you would have given me the choice. All right, Beltron, or Baez. I'm sorry, that's probably why you just missed that, because I called you by the wrong name. Base is loaded, and we only get one run. That's not great. We're not executing. Ramon, I need you for one more inning. God, look at all these pitches it's taking him. But he's a knuckleballer. He's, his arm is basically made out of rubber. He can pitch all day long. Because it doesn't require a lot of arm strength to throw a knuckleball. Ooh, pulling out a slider. Nasty. Oh, look at that location. This is murder on a hitter. Because he's going to look at that and he's going to think, I can't hit that. But the umpire might call it a strike if I don't swing. So two strikes, I gotta protect the plate. I gotta swing at it. Oh, damn. Good throw. Yeah. That was Fuentes doing his thing. Yeah. Let's keep it up. Get him, Hernandez. Or Hernandez. Excuse me, the H is silent at being a... Spanish ass. Oh, that's a double for sure. Maybe a triple. <coughs> the most exciting play in baseball. That'll get the fans on their feet. Ooh, we could do a suicide squeeze to take the lead. He's got good back control. Let's do it. We're gonna call the. We're gonna call a, a squeeze bunt. We're gonna call a suicide squeeze. Do it. Oh, weak shit. We might have lost the game on that, and that's totally my fault if we did. Mate, if you're going to squeeze, uh, do a suicide squeeze, you're always supposed to hit it to the first base side, not directly in front of home play. Bad move. Oh, but it looks like we're going to score anyway. No, we're still not. Why are you not running, Pagan? You've got really good speed. I guess you wanted Lindor to score him. All right, we're starting to, starting to cook a little bit. We chase the pitcher. We're now facing Kirokazu Sawamura. And, of course, he's going to be another retired guy, so we don't know what any of his pitches are or what he's good at. He's good at ground, making us ground into double plays. That's all we need to freaking know. So the split-fingered fastball also breaks down like a forkball. Forkballs are slightly slower. They're honestly almost the exact same pitch. They're almost the same. To the point where if you said they were the same pitch, I wouldn't necessarily argue with you. No! Roman, you are here to knuckleball the shit out of them. Which requires throwing it for a strike. Nice diving stop by the left fielder. Good work, Pagan. Good work. Shogo Akiyama. You are helpless before the knuckleball. Unless, of course, you see the number one problem of the knuckleball, the wild pitch. Because the pitcher doesn't know where the ball's going, and neither does the catcher. Oh, that's bad. You jerk, Ramon. You used to be my, used to be my boy, and now you're just an asshole because you gave up a double. Yeah, this was bound to happen. Sorry about the air horn there. Stupid Japan. 
And the thing is, I, I guess I gotta get someone warming up. We gotta get someone else in the damn game besides asshole McGee here. Wow, it's fast how quickly you can turn on somebody in baseball. Let's have a visit to the mound. Be like, Let's try sucking less. And he's like, oh, suck less. So it says he's got plenty in the tank. And he says he's warming up. Come on, Ramon. That's what we want to see. Nice, weak ground balls. Yeah, pop fly. Good stuff. Boop. I'm crediting entirely that mound visit. Vargas, do your thing. Vargas has been doing a great job in this game. He's been spraying the ball everywhere. Beltran, keep up the pressure. A weak saw strikeout is not what I'm looking for. Yachty A. Or I guess I could just call him Yachty. That's what they called him on St. Louis. <sighs> no. Not the time to risk it. Baez, do it. I see. You thought I meant strikeout. By do it, I meant hit the fucking ball. Get him, Hernandez. Yeah. That's the good stuff. Oh, fans don't like that. Must be a lot of Japanese fans in the stadium today. Pagan? Oh, yeah. Eh, nope. Not going to force it. We took the lead. Fuentes. Can you bring in one more? You cannot. You can sing along if you want to. I won't sing. Actually, I might get copyright strike for that. No, take me to the ball game. Should be public domain now. Okay, that's from like the 1930s, so it should be public domain. All right, Joe, get in there. What is Joe good at? He's good at having a Puerto Rican flag on his shirt. That's an important first step. Really good fastball slider. Good stuff. Decent control. And he throws nice and hard. This is the exact opposite to Roman. This is what we're looking for. And the third baseman couldn't get out of his glove fast enough. God damn it. Here comes Yama. Oh, we should have gone double play death. We'll do it this time. We're going to go ahead and do double play depth. Okay. It's a little hard to see what it looks like now, so we're actually going to zoom out. You'll notice where they're positioned now. They're much closer to the back than they were before. We'll go back to widescreen. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, stupid Japan. Stupid ho... I don't know what I called him, ho. Joe Jimenez. What the shit, mate? I want to replay that just because I want to see where that last pitch was. Oh, it doesn't actually where the pitch is. That's probably it, but we're, we're I'm going to make him pitch the rest of the inning. You need to learn from your mistakes. Or I need to learn from my mistakes, which is keeping this jackass in the game. And there's no double play because they weren't double play depth. That's on me. It took a diving stop to get her second out. Joe Jimenez. What the shit, mate. What the shit. And they bring in a new pitcher, Tatsushi Matsada. No, I don't want to. God damn it. I'm going to make Claudio pitch um, two innings if we need him to. 
Come on, Lindor. Let's start off the inning with a base runner. Which I meant you. There's Korea. That won't be a hit. As a diving stop. Damn it. Vargas? We struck out. Joe Jimenez, you are garbage. I apologize if the real Joe Jimenez is watching this. It's not a very high likelihood, but I guess it is possible. There we go. Claudio, a good mixture of sinker and slider. Nice. Yeah, throw him a change up there. He's eating him up. That should be an out. Yep, there he goes. Alright guys, we need to start something now. Which means Beltron, hit ball hard. Not hard enough. God damn that left fielder. Ran that one down. They're going to run this one down too because that one's just hanging in the air. Look, you're not supposed to blow the air horn when your team's in the field. You're supposed to blow when the other team is so they drop the ball. Javi Baez. Up, oh, that one might be out. It is. We're only down by one run. Okay, Enrique Hernandez. You've been the man this game. But not then. And Japan... Barely beats us. Oh, look how happy the Japanese players are. Aww. Um, as they barely defeat us. Thanks because Joe Jimenez, what the hell. You're not allowed to be on the team next year. So that concludes episode two. So please join me next time. Um, let's generate the WPA graph. So this is the win probability graph. And this tells you when the decisive moment was. So it looked like things are looking bad. Oh, here we go. We're getting better. And then there's the double to tie the game. And then we get Angel Pagan and Enrique Hernandez. Things look good. Oh, shit. It's a three-run homer. And then we did. There should at least be like a little blip at the end for, um, for Baez's homer. <coughs> I blame Carlos Beltran, <coughs> but I really blame Joe Jimenez. So who are we going to play in the final? So who actually made it? Oh, we don't know who made it yet because, oh yeah, we do. Venezuela won. I think we'll play as Venezuela for the championship round. We have to actually finish today. That'll, there it goes. Fine, you know what? Here, everyone's on the damn Major League roster. I don't even care, because I'm not actually going to play as the damn Rangers. Alright. So we're going to take over Venezuela for the last round. Act as Venezuela. And we'll actually sim ahead to that game. And then we'll talk through that game and the conclusion to the Out of the Park Baseball 18 series on Avindian's YouTube channel. Um, please feel free to like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know how you might have changed your strategy um, to see if we could maybe have come out on top this time. But until next time, this has been Avindian, and I bid you good day.